Composites Manufacturing Series, examining the materials, tools, and techniques used for composites fabrication. This program is an introduction to liquid molding processes. Liquid molding encompasses various composite manufacturing methods that produce parts using liquid thermoset resin within molds. Typically, these molds are first filled with reinforcement material, closed or sealed, and then subsequently filled with the resin using either pressure, vacuum, or a combination of the two. Most liquid molding methods are a variation of the resin transfer molding or RTM process. Resin transfer molding, which is also called liquid transfer molding, uses a low viscosity thermosetting resin system to facilitate the transfer of resin into the mold. This resin is pumped under pressure into a two-part matched cavity mold containing the fiber reinforcement. Resin transfer molding may also be performed with a vacuum assist. The reinforcement materials, which are usually continuous fibers, may be cut and then draped in place in the mold, or if as a pre-shaped preform, set in place. Once placement of the reinforcement materials is complete, the mold halves are closed and securely clamped together. Depending on the desired part and production quantities needed, clamping pressure for resin transfer molding can be obtained using tools ranging from latch clamps and threaded fasteners to large hydraulically driven presses. Resin is then pumped into the mold, forcing it to infiltrate the enclosed reinforcement material and fill the mold. To keep resin from squeezing out under pressure, a gasket or gaskets between mold halves are usually required. The air trapped within the mold is vented out through breather holes as it is displaced by the resin. Typically, molds may have one or more injection points and breather holes. In general, Low pressure RTM uses less than 30 pounds per square inch or 2 tenths megapascals and rarely more than 100 pounds per square inch or 7 tenths megapascals injection pressure for successful resin transfer molding. The RTM resin system is a mixture of resin, catalyst and may include color additives and filler. The typical RTM resins include polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy, bismaliumid, and sometimes phenolic or cyanate ester resins. Once the resin fills the mold, the injection point or points, and in some cases the breather holes, are plugged and the part is allowed to cure. Curing may be performed at room temperature or with the aid of integrally heated molds. Resin transfer molding cycle time, including curing, commonly ranges from 5 to 30 minutes and up to several hours. Once cured, the mold halves are separated and the resin transfer molded part removed. An advantage of resin transfer molding is that the volatile organic compounds or VOCs emitted by the catalyzed resin are contained in the closed mold. This results in minimal chemical exposure to workers and the environment. Resin transfer molding is an efficient method of producing large composite parts having two finished sides and close dimensional tolerances. Typically, resin transfer molding is suitable for annual production of 100 to 50,000 part quantities. Complex shapes can be produced, increasing opportunities for parts integration, reducing post-production fastening and bonding, and minimizing part-to-part -part variations.
Although inexpensive tool material can be used, resin transfer tool cost is high because tool design is critical to achieving resin saturation throughout the part within reasonable time. The mold must allow the resin to reach all areas at similar concentration at about the same time before gelation. The molds may be insulated for temperature control, even if room temperature cured resins are used. Temperature control helps to ensure uniform resin viscosity and gel time. Common resin transfer mold materials include glass fiber reinforced polyester tooling and molds made of aluminum or steel for high volume production and or elevated temperature curing. The principal variations of resin transfer molding are vacuum modified processes with two of the primary being vacuum assisted resin transfer molding and the vacuum infusion process. In vacuum assisted resin transfer molding which is also commonly referred to as Vardam and as RTM light, resin is pumped into the mold while the mold is under vacuum. This vacuum assists in pulling the resin through the reinforcement material in the mold, limiting the pressure needed for injection. The vacuum also speeds injection and helps ensure complete saturation of the reinforcement materials. Because limited injection pressure is used, RTM light molds don't require the rigidity, engineering, or costs associated with standard resin transfer molds. Typical RTM light molds consist of a lower or female cavity half that is rigid in construction and an upper male half that is semi-flexible, see-through, and lightweight. Both mold halves are commonly produced out of composite materials, typically glass fiber reinforced polyester or vinyl ester. Depending on the part, a protective layer of catalyzed resin called a gel coat is often applied to the mold and allowed to cure to the gel or tacky state before the reinforcement is applied. Once the reinforcement is in place, the mold halves are brought together and a vacuum is drawn, sealing against a gasket between the mold halves. Resin is then injected from around the part's perimeter and is drawn toward the vacuum port, which is typically placed near the center of the mold. Proper placement of the vacuum port is essential for RTM light operations, since resin flow into the mold is due mainly to its pull. Once the resin is injected, the injection and vacuum ports are clamped off and the part is allowed to cure. RTM light mold cost savings are offset by the lower production life of the tooling, typically less than half that of a standard resin transfer mold. But as new materials are developed and design innovations and process controls improve, RTM light tooling production life is increasing. The vacuum infusion process, which is commonly referred to as VIP or as resin infusion, uses vacuum bagging and vacuum pressure to pull resin into the reinforcement material, which is typically a laminate of materials. Vacuum infusion was developed to improve upon the shortfalls of traditional vacuum bagging of composite parts. With traditional vacuum bagging, reinforcement materials are wet out with catalyzed resin and then quickly laid up manually in a mold. The mold and layup material are then sealed with a vacuum bag and a vacuum is drawn to compress the impregnated layup material against the mold and draw out excessive resin. Manually wetting out of the reinforcement materials usually results in the oversaturation of resin within the reinforcement. Resin alone is brittle, so any excess tends to weaken parts. The vacuum pressure 
removes much of this excess resin, but the amount removed is dependent upon variables such as time, reinforcement type, resin type, and other factors. Traditional vacuum bagging can be very messy and exposure to the catalyzed resin harmful. The improvements that the vacuum infusion process has over vacuum bagging include unlimited setup time, better fiber to resin ratio, consistent resin usage, and a much cleaner process. In a typical vacuum infusion operation, a thin skin coat of chopped fiber and resin is applied to a gel coated mold. The gel coat is the part's finished surface and the skin coat acts as a protective layer that prevents the vacuum infused reinforcement materials and catalyzed resin from penetrating through the gel coat surface during curing. Once the skin coat is cured, reinforcement materials are placed in the mold. Depending upon the part requirements, inserts made of metals, woods, plastics, or other materials can be easily placed into position within the mold. These inserts serve as stiffeners, fastener receptacles, or other purposes. Special flow materials are common in vacuum infusion. These materials are laminates of reinforcement materials with a flow medium incorporated into it. Under vacuum, the flow medium allows the resin to flow unencumbered through the reinforcement material in a desired manner for timely, uniform distribution of resin throughout the part. Once all the reinforcement materials, inserts and flow mediums are in place, T-fitting connectors for the infusion tubing are secured within the material. Depending on the size and complexity of the part, one or more T-fitting connectors are used. These connectors are typically located towards the center of the part, while the medium for drawing the vacuum, usually a spiral tubing or spiral wrap, is secured around the perimeter of the mold. Once the T-fittings and vacuum medium are secured, a vacuum bag is mounted around the mold. The vacuum tubing is connected and a vacuum is drawn on the bag. The vacuum pump source for infusion can range from small portable compressors to large stationary units. As the vacuum is being drawn on the bag, it is constantly worked to properly seal it against the reinforcement material. This ensures that minimal voids that can trap and reroute excess resin will occur. The bag is also inspected for leaks, and if any are found, they are fixed. As the vacuum pressure is reached, small holes are cut in the vacuum bag over the T-fittings, and resin infeed tubing that has been clamped off is secured to these connectors. Once at the required vacuum infusion pressure, the infeed clamp is removed, and newly catalyzed resin is pulled into the vacuum bagged reinforcement material, infusing it. As the resin infuses the reinforcement material, it is pulled towards the vacuum source, which is around the mold perimeter. A resin trap or traps are set up between the part being vacuum infused and the vacuum pump source. These traps capture any excess resin pulled from the mold as the reinforcement material is wet out, preventing the resin from reaching and ruining the vacuum pump. Ideally, since any excess resin is pulled from the vacuum infusion process, only the minimum amount of resin is used for reinforcement wet out. This lowers the weight of the finished part, adding strength and maximizing the reinforcement and resin properties. A variation of the vacuum infusion process involves the use of a modified resin spray-up gun that mixes and dispenses the catalyzed resin under low pressure to the vacuum-bagged part. 
This allows for very consistent resin mixing and distribution and makes the process virtually odor free. Let's review the material contained in this program. Most liquid molding methods are a variation of the resin transfer molding or RTM process. Resin transfer molding, which is also called liquid transfer molding, uses a low viscosity thermosetting resin system to facilitate the transfer of resin into the mold. This resin is pumped under pressure into a two-part matched cavity mold containing the fiber reinforcement. Resin transfer molding is an efficient method of producing large composite parts having two finished sides and close dimensional tolerances. Typically, resin transfer molding is suitable for annual production of 100 to 50,000 part quantities. Although inexpensive tool material can be used, resin transfer tool cost is high because tool design is critical to achieving resin saturation throughout the part within reasonable time. Common resin transfer mold materials include glass fiber reinforced polyester tooling and molds made of aluminum or steel for high volume production and or elevated temperature curing. The principal variations of resin transfer molding are vacuum modified processes with two of the primary being vacuum assisted resin transfer molding and the vacuum infusion process. In vacuum assisted resin transfer molding, which is also commonly referred to as Vardam and as RTM light, resin is pumped into the mold while the mold is under vacuum. This vacuum assists in pulling the resin through the reinforcement material in the mold, limiting the pressure needed for injection. The vacuum also speeds injection and helps ensure complete saturation of the reinforcement materials. Because limited injection pressure is used, RTM light molds don't require the rigidity, engineering or costs associated with standard resin transfer molds. RTM light mold cost savings are offset by the lower production life of the tooling, typically less than half that of a standard resin transfer mold. But as new materials are developed and design innovations and process controls improve, RTM light tooling production life is increasing. The vacuum infusion process, which is commonly referred to as VIP, or as resin infusion, uses vacuum bagging and vacuum pressure to pull resin into the reinforcement material, which is typically a laminate of materials. Special flow materials are common in vacuum infusion. These materials are laminates of reinforcement materials with a flow medium incorporated into it. Under vacuum, the flow medium allows the resin to flow unencumbered through the reinforcement material in a desired manner for timely, uniform distribution of resin throughout the part. Ideally, since any excess resin is pulled from the vacuum infusion process, only the minimum amount of resin is used for reinforcement wet out. This lowers the weight of the finished part, adding strength and maximizing the reinforcement and resin properties.